it's poison been going girls. on for far too long. Poison it's, girls. Yes, poison girls. Poison. <laughs> no, it's poise. Po- then- I, I- and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast. We list show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to's that. Reviews, most importantly, whatever the hell else. I, I took a break, man. I was shooting my co host. <laughs> we come up with. Uh, I got the need. The need for bouncy pads, or, you know, at least the latest update to speedrunners. It absolutely does. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And D9VK, not to be confused with DXVK, has hit 0.10. Stick around. I'll tell you why that's so neat. Our PCS3 has a new blog post that empirically improves that Linux is superior. And Legend Studio dangles some after shows and bait in front of our faces. Let's see if we bite. The Cinders is out of early access. Time to get your bike on or on your bike. And GOG is totally improving that Linux game build upload thing. This time for real, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. I'm Vince Stone, that's Jordan Swang, and one Pedro Mateus together with you joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. That's right. Got a nice little picture in uh, Shadow Realm Dynamic right now from Mike. That's gorgeous. That's lovely. Um, I'm pretty sure that's whipped cream. It, it's always whipped cream with you, man. I'm just like, <laughs> you and your whipped cream addiction. It's in your coffee and in your cocaine. It's terrifying. <laughs> I bathe in it, man. That's what I do. You have a whip. It, it makes my skin super rich and buttery. Oh, that. <laughs> I don't. I, I apologize on behalf of Linux Gamecast LLP for that, ladies and gentlemen. I what, don't. What, what have we been up to, Jordan? Uh, not much. <laughs> sub, sub, settled. He was thinking about whipped cream, man. He couldn't change gears. He was like, mm, whipped cream. I, yeah, I, well, I mean, like, I've been making this Sunday, and, like, I, I ran out of whipped cream, and I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to put this maraschino cherry on top of? And then I just ate an entire jar of maraschino cherries. No, no, no nothing real interesting happened uh, this week, um, or last week, for that matter, aside from the whole move thing. Settling in, assembled bookshelves, loading them up. Still have a ton of boxes left to sort through. Right. I have no idea where I'm. Now, now, now comes the part of the move where it's like, okay, I have all the furniture built. Now I got to figure out where to put everything. Do you just line it all up against one wall and be like, there, done. <laughs> <laughs> the wall of random crap. Yeah, man, it works. <laughs> it, yeah, it, 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 it's, it separates the realms of Jordan from the fucking wild mess that I have. Until at least a blue man comes with a zombie dragon and blows it all up. Well, if you think Pedro's sexy new t-shirt is to die for, wait until he tells you about his phone, because that's probably what he's going to tell you about. Well, uh, there is that. Uh, Work issued me with a phone. It's a... um, Well, I basically issued myself with a phone. It's a Nokia 7.1. It's uh, it's an alright phone for like 180 pounds. This... The performance of this is basically on par with the shield tablet which is kind of insane it's like oh yeah that uh what do they call it the tegra k1 soc was the bomb back in the day nowadays oh not so much okay it's a <laughs> phone man so Take so what other check twitter fuck off um <laughs> so, so what other stuff have you embezzled from your workplace dude <laughs> again it is remotely managed, despite, you know, this the is fact brilliant. that I... Pedro's, I was like, it's got an asset control remotely. sticker on it as he takes his <laughs> remote out. Like, it does. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> under the cover. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I've been playing with a whole lot. Um, reworking some audio stuff, trying to decide whether or not I want to build, like, a dedicated audio render box and how to make... We got all the parts for it. it it's like uh, playing Curse of the Raven's Cry. I got all the right parts. I just don't have them in the right configuration currently. And uh, intentionally bricked the Amazon tablet to re- rewrite the bootloader, which was encrypted, which is no longer encrypted. Uh, more on that 11, if you like hanging around XDA developers. Made some mm. progress on that front. So that was fun. Uh, you want to just get into what the horse is up to? Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, 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 the horse is a little disappointed right now. Some stuff has uh, been... Some stuff that what was long promised is now not ever going to show up again because of reasons. It's not Steam! Let's Womp womp. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. I, I, I bought like 20 extra pitchforks and I was running around. Actually, no, I didn't. I set my ass back. 
Because when this story kind of rolled out earlier this week, uh, I think it was on Monday, because a lot of people were like, Van, 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 did you see this? Did you see this? It's like, got, yeah, Gary said that, the creator of Rust, uh, Gary's Mutt, the guy who hates Linux and actively trolls, like, almost to the point of, I'm not even going to say almost, he'll just straight up say non-truths to wind up Linux users. Mm -hmm. And he did, and easy anti-cheat, you know, earlier he was like, yo, yeah, Easy Anti-Cheat said they're not do Linux anymore. Uh-huh. So <laughs> Easy Anti-Cheat had to come back and tweet to quote, to clarify, Easy Anti-Cheat still provides native Linux support and will continue to do so. Earlier comments by a partner, Gary, reflect ordinary day-to-day -day prioritization decisions, anti-cheat issues across all platforms, and not any change in long-term priority. For Linux, which was kind of a big news because Valve is... Like even Valve's like, yo, we're working with this to get this sorted out. And, mm -hmm. and everyone lost their sh people. It's Gary. <laughs> it's Gary. It, ignore it. Safe I th bet. I, th I, th I think, though, that reaction comes from some, like, very legitimate fears, though. Uh, because, you know, Easy Andy Cheat is actually owned by Epic Games. They bought it out last year. Mm -hmm. So given 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 old Tim's uh, penchant for making boneheaded decisions, uh, he may he, it is within the realm of possibility. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. I'm just saying that the possibility exists. He's that too busy buying Tim, Tim, Rocket Cars. He's double. playing Rocket Cars, man. He ain't got time for anti-sheet. <laughs> may, may, maybe. But they very well could do a dumb and be like, you know what? Stop working with the Valve and their Proton guys because we're going to start our own Proton with Blackjack and hookers. and <laughs> It's not going to work or have a shopping cart or any sort of actual functionality. I don't. I don't know. But yeah, no, the the original comments from earlier in the week were coming from someone who can't even get a mouse cursor to work in a Ubuntu see, virtual see, machine. This is why I say don't feed the trolls. He, he he absolutely can, but he can write <laughs> shit like that on the internet and motherfuckers can't help themselves. They're like, ah, he's dumb. Because he made two reasonably popular games and he therefore he thinks he's some great developer it's like sorry gary your first work was derivative at best and your second work is a uh, piece of shit let's be honest <laughs> so yeah no it's like unless easy anti-cheat themselves came out and said yes we are like putting linux on the side burner for some reason which they didn't in fact they came out and said the exact opposite and uh, that reminds me, how's that uh, Valve time going on those talks? I don't know, it, Pedro. You're it, so it, toxic. Being, You're what's wrong it, with the Linux community. It's being stifled by all the all the money, all that Fortnite money that uh, Gary, or not that Gary, that Tim that is cramming down their Gary, Tim, Tim, Tim's going to buy Gary. Tim, Tim, Wait, Tim, Tim Gary. Listen, it's all fucking white people names. I can't tell them apart. Um, Tim Newman. <laughs> Gary Sweeney. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like something Canadian would say. Hey, we got good news, man. Well, uh, I don't know. This is uh, Ven's little um, guilty what? pleasure right here. Uh, he may say, no, 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 no. This is just here because of Dwarf Fortress. And that's, it's, that's uh, why it's here, baby. We have an open One of the totally uh, most wish listed games uh, today. It's like number one, two, three, four, five, what, six, what, seven, eight. What, 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 Ben? You don't want to know about Subverse because your <laughs> your computer generated waifus aren't naked enough. <laughs> yeah. So it is one of the things that Steam lets you do is it lets you sort out by um the number of uh or the number of wish lists that people have on a certain game and you can see it's mostly like upcoming stuff like halo and vampire the masquerade and outer worlds because fuck you obsidian like seriously fuck you oh, I, oh look blood bloodstains on that list too fuck you as well <laughs> dropping your linux support yeah and it's like, I really wanted to play, you know, the Outer Worlds. I wanted to at least have the options like, okay, it's not on Linux, but Proton. And now it's an epic thing until 2020. So, fuck you, Obsidian. <laughs> Full of joy and love here tonight at OCC. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> we're, 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 so, we're so cuddly. We are, man. <laughs> I, I was, earlier this week when I posted that, Door Fortress was number one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but, I, I, I mean, I, I, to have a completely open source game that heavily wishlisted, which is good. I, I thought that was worth 
giving it a mention. I'm like, kudos. I, I'm glad to see that that game has that much love. Time is subject. <laughs> That's the release date still. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. Subjective. <laughs> Valve time, baby. Valve time. So, bounce. So, I want to I show you a trick on my pogo stick. Get off your feet and bounce around, man. Speedrunners update. <laughs> uh, a while ago, Casper had been experimenting with bounce pads in the workshop competition uh, going on. They figured they would be a good time to like throw it into the level editor. So, if you like speedrunners, I really enjoyed this game. It's just criminally underrated but there's even a demo map where you can jump in and play around with that nonsense i think it's really neat because that's what this game absolutely needed more fuckery <laughs> oh ab ab absolutely and they're, they're making it available for a level creation contest is an interesting move because i'm sure in the coming months we're going to see some community plagiar i'm sorry inspired levels that make it <laughs> the official levels hey <laughs> Party mode, free dip. Well, it's Windows only. Wah, wah. That, that, that's yeah. unfortunate. I, I think that's just the client that lets you just hop into multiplayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can get the official version. It requires the latest Debian re redistributable or Steam OS. So that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those things like, how was this not in already? It's, it's bounce pads. It just makes sense for this style of game anyway. It's like, I don't, I don't, oh, I don't they're know. only introducing them now. Well, because speedrunners is one of those things where like the levels are super meticulously balanced, right? So like oh, yeah. every, every every time you add something like that, it completely throws the design philosophy out the window because you got to account for like how because the the great thing about speedrunners is like you can be lagging behind and st then because you took a tr one additional fork on a track, you can shoot out ahead, right? Like that's the Dude, entire point of the game. It, it's by meticulously balanced. What you mean to say is sadistic. <laughs> I, I mean the, the strategy is to try to because we, we don't play it regularly enough to have any of the maps memorized so it's always a good strategy just go ahead and jump because there's probably some boxes just outside of that screen and you have to run at the edge of the screen in order to mm -hmm. crush everyone so yeah, it's definitely fun good to see an update but what do we have up next slipstream S slipstream yeah it's a, it's a racing game I think they sent us some keys a long long time ago Play a little it's bit an of, app image um, racing game. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so they have uh, the one-year anniversary coming out. Uh, so they made some changes, like adding the automatic uh, Tokyo Drift thing to the single-player mode. Also, apparently, it's too dark in the Mystic Cave, so they increased the brightness. But listen, listen, listen Ansdor, you told me that it was a time machine, and I could go in there to meet Jesus and Ben Franklin, and <laughs> that I, I don't Jesus remember what at all. I, I don't remember what happened afterwards, but I'm pretty sure I didn't meet Jesus. Um, they're saying that it's going to be on sale uh, next week, so if you've been um, if you've been interested in this, you can probably go pick it up for a little cheaper. Uh, hmm. But yeah, it's a racing game under Linux. <laughs> I've never been able to really play it because before the update, it was permanently stuck in like a 640 by 480 window, which is fucking adorable on a UHD monitor. Like, oh, like, oh, I, I have some words about that for the Gamer Throne chairs of this week, man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's only like six <laughs> inches long. Um, but the recent update, I tried it and it just blinked out like my primary and secondary monitor and crashed to desktop. So I guess it's progress. Okay, that's different. I haven't it's tried different. the new update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that. But hey, man. Um, what do we got? Oh, Blood. more good news. Blood. Yeah. Check it out. It's coming to Linux after all. Arthur threw this into our show notes. Uh, from Pit Gurb. Gurb. Gar Garbe. Uh, yeah, man. Night dive. I was like, yo, man, Mac and Linux is coming soon. But what is Blood, Jordan? I've never heard of it. Uh, Blood's that uh, shooter that has a... Uh, is, is this is this the enhanced remake or is this the net new one? I don't remember. Because there, there are a bunch of them being built with like the uh, the build engine that mm -hmm. had been coming I out I think recently. this is the original one. The, oh, yeah. So this this is the original one. Uh, I think yeah. Butts actually <laughs> did some work on this one as well. Uh, yeah. So they're going to put out a uh, Linux version because, you know... The build engine supports Linux. It's to be, <laughs> I agree with you, Ben. It would be it would be kind of dumb to have like a game engine that supports Linux and not produce any Linux binary super giant. <laughs> I wanted to play Hades, but uh, no, you had to go to the Epic Store and ugh. 
I know a lot of people were excited about this game because they're like, oh, we're going to use the build engine, which I probably could still fuck around a little bit in the build engine. That's where I cut my teeth before Quake, anything like that was, I mean, I printed that out. I got screamed at by my mom. It's like, quit wasting all the ink. And <laughs> you printed out the source code for Quake? <laughs> no, no, for the build engine, all the instructions okay. and guides on how to set up levels because you could do elevation. And I, to this day, the um, saloon doors, that took a weekend to figure out how to make those things function correctly. Mm. But yeah, a, a new game built using that older tech. Um, so good on them. Just hurry up and get it out. And it's also going to come for our Mac brethren and sister mm. as well. Yep. So, and play, there play was that uh, open source implementation we talked about not too long ago. So, push comes to shove, you always have that to fall back on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is true. All right, enough about hipster pixel games. Yeah, let's talk about, let's hipster, talk pixel about hipster pixel games. All right, fine. <laughs> so, this, this, this is one of those games that, ha that does something really neat with uh, multiplayer mechanics, and I really wanted to try it out. And it's coming out on May 3rd. Never split the party. I think it's past May 3rd now. Maybe. I don't know, what... I don't know how I don't, time I don't works listen. in Canada. I don't know what fucking day it is. I don't pay attention to that shit. Um, but yeah, I know it's, it's out now. Uh, it's, it's a multiplayer game where um, the information uh, that you have access to is limited by whoever's in the same room as you. So, uh, like, you won't be able to see the map or your other your other uh, co-player's uh, co healths or whatever if you're not that particular party member who's in the room. Um, and, yeah, I think this would be pretty cool after show bait. And it's released for your general <laughs> consumption. You can pick it up for free. free. What's the catch? Yeah, the, mm -hmm. uh, the catch is if you want to have, like anything other than the two non-basic classes, you got to pay 15 bucks, but I think that's reasonable. Content. I think, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. What do we need to run it? 1204 Steamos Plus. All right. Direct X11. So yeah. DXVK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Natively. We this might try that after show. <laughs> yeah, that could definitely be a thing. It looks simple enough, but um, yeah, I'm kind of with you, Pedro. I was like, hmm, this, this looks a little interesting. Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely price to sell and uh, something that could also be price to sell, but it's actually like 20 pounds, at least on a regular day around here, All is right. the Cinders that's also come out of early access really uh, like earlier in the week, A7, yeah. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a mountain bike downhill trial style game and you, yeah, that that's that's what you do. It's, I'm curious. I want to try it. It's a little bit on the pricey side, but it does have anybody like, else hearing like it's hard to rock a rhyme in time get tricky. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little less sex tricky vibe. From yeah, it. that man, that was a fun game. I played the crap out of the demo for that. Um, I played a lot of Dave Mira back in the day. Uh, uh my, but yeah, my it's very positive reviewed, so that yeah. is, yeah, yeah. My problem, <laughs> my problem is that there's not enough Oculus Rift here. For cyclists, <laughs> there's not a people there's not getting even VR driving down a mountain with their Oculus on. Like, wait, right. wait, and they do splat. say you need. Um, they recommend Ubuntu 1204 32 bit. I honestly would like to try. <laughs> it's it's got procedurally generated things, so that could yep. prop, uh, possibly be really bad, but it could also be very hilarious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pro procedurally generated. Dude, I don't know. Nothing's more entertaining than procedural generation gone wrong. Yeah, you just <laughs> drive into a fucking tree. Especially when you're tree. driving down a mountain with an Oculus Rift on your fucking head. Exactly. <laughs> this is what this game requires, man. Modders, get on this shit right now. Get some. Get some Oculus Online Rift. Online multiplayer, game. twenty bucks a pop. I don't know. It maybe does. Maybe we'll play around with it. Maybe. Could very well happen. I did shoot him an email. They haven't replied yet. Fair <laughs> question, Jordan. Can you ride a bike? Yes. Okay, I don't know. I, I assume Pedro can. Yes. <laughs> he's allergic. No, he's, you're allergic to water. That's it. <laughs> what, what, what is he, the fucking Wicked Witch of the West? <laughs> no, man, he's the Wicked Witch of Cambridge. He's like, it might be. I'm melting, okay, take a bike. I'm <laughs> what a world, what a world. What a world. I get indeed. rained on a lot. <laughs> Uh, whatever, let's get out of here. Wait, 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 rain on our parade. Coming up next, we talk about our favorite psychopaths who are writing an emulator as opposed to our favorite psychopaths who are implementing other things, as well as it's not DXVK, it's D9VK. KB11. I love it. 
Hold out that the uh, horse has been thoroughly um, ground into a fine, fine paste. Let's get into the other bit of news, but of course, not before we take a little teeny tiny little bit of your time to say thank you. Thank you very much. You lot of insane people keep this thing going. I don't know why, but you do. So thank you. You know, we yeah, really sure. need some um, like carnival music behind that. And yeah, we put a top hat on him and like get Nori to like poke him like with a cane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get 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 a little podium extra, yeah. extra. Come over here, see the carnival, <laughs> see the idiots dance. If Throw you like watching us, idiots. I, I, I don't know. I, you know, I think I think either of us could like pick up Pennywise and throw it at Pedro. Hundred percent. Um. Anyways, uh, shilling time begins now. Head on over to Patreon or not Patreon.com, LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> Click the support menu. Ho- hover your mouse over there and Woo-hoo. follow it to the various links. We got we got um, Amazon affiliate links, New York affiliate links, wish lists, all sorts of stuff that you can click on to help support the show. But of course, the best way to do that is head yes. on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us money week after week after week. We'll give you some cool stuff like access to our Discord channel or access to the show notes or the, the an extra hour of Linux gaming goodness called the pre-pre-super show. Or the, where we... just the sheer joy of supporting those who support Linux, right? That doesn't exist. Uh-huh. It's, it's an urban legend. <laughs> Communist. <laughs> man, man. Patreon is like 100% the opposite of communism. But anyways. Um, but yeah, you, you you get cool stuff. Um, if you if you like Doctor Who, we got some Doctor Who podcasts for you behind the Patreon wall. It's all sorts of goodies. And one of the you, things I think we're going to do this week, um, we're going to do like a little Avengers spoiler cast. That'll, that'll be that'll be fun yeah. if you want to if you want to check that out you should totally we'll make that a thing yeah but you know so, so some of us just want and crave friendship and mm, if, if you're, you, you're if watching you, if, the if wrong you, show right <laughs> well no here, here's the thing though if you if you if, if you if you buy stuff for us then you can become a special kind of friend you you get put up on a wall you can be our fuck but <laughs> You can be our fuck buddy. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with that, man. Um, Did you go full know. Silas on the limbs on someone? <laughs> no, no. I, 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 was, I was thinking I was going to go like Roger Waters the wall on them. Um, <laughs> uh, and anyways, yeah. So uh, buy, buy some stuff off of our Amazon wish list. We'll get you on the fuck wall 2.0, which is going to be retired. You can go to the fuck wall 3.0 soon. Uh, but I got a wish list. Ven has a wi- or wish, wish list. A wish list. It's the, a fish list. It's and better Pedro than the has... fish list, man. We got rid of that. Well, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say Pedro has a pish list. Um, <laughs> pish posh. <laughs> yeah. So if you, if you, if you, if you want, if you want to pish Pedro away, you can, you can. I, I, I don't even know where. And I'm going finally, before we get out of here, man, if you want to adorn yourself with Linux Gamecast glory, you can do that with our T-shirts. We got Hell Elks. We got Francophiles. We got stickers with chairs on them and mugs with elks. Put that all over your body. It'll be hot. It'll be sexy. It'll be brilliant. But we need to think. Matthew Commandon, who increased the pledge as Clutris.net. Go check that business out. And David, who has also increased their Patreon pledge because he's Woo. awesome as well. It's brilliant. Thank you for supporting us and letting us get away with shenanigans. That's a polite way to put what we do. Shenanigans. shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans. Whenever you said shenanigans again, I'm going to pistol whip you. All right. So, um, our PCS3, those crazy people who decided, you know what? In about two years, we're going to make a fully functional PlayStation 3 emulator that can play half the games on the PlayStation 3 catalog have actually got to the point where they can play about half the games on the PlayStation 3 catalog. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a little progress report thing. They put these out periodically just to say, like, hey, you're giving us money on Patreon. It's not fucking going to waste. Look at, look at all this crap that we're doing. So some of the some of the highlights of this post is that they added native DualShock three support, but at the moment only for Windows. They go into a little bit of detail about like how the Windows USB subsystem doesn't really play nice with it, and you need like lib USB, which comes with Linux fairly easily. You can just install that. Um, but I'm pretty sure also that like if you just plug in your DualShock three, Linux it'll, will it'll recognize it as right. yeah. It'll it's like mm-hmm. this, this is a game controller. If you want, and if you have it plugged in with like the Bluetooth thing attached, it's like, hey, I'm gonna configure this as a Bluetooth controller as well. It's pretty freaking nice. Also, apparently, Isn't that the one Linux of the things though. I mean, wouldn't you be more surprised? This is, this is how you can tell somebody's just talking shit about Linux. Usually on Twitter, and like Linux are too hard. You gotta recompile the. Cr-. It's like genuinely, as somebody who uses Linux data, aren't you more surprised when you just fucking plug something in and it doesn't just work? 
I know. It's, Actually, it's, I'm it's, excited when that happens. It's like, ooh, I get to make something work. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed. Um, though appar- apparently um, the Linux IO uh, disk IO drivers are far superior to that of Windows because there was a performance in- issue that was cropping up under Windows that basically involved um, Windows setting Wait, up a this queue a performance and issue? it. Because I want it in my life. <laughs> oh man, the, the LSD I, I just want I, I just want IRL to look like. Wait a minute, that. Is, um, is this a Denver truck? <laughs> so need, needs more mushrooms. Uh, but yeah, they they had to include a specific fix to make Windows perform less like garbage. Um, the other big thing is that their uh, SPU interpreter and recompiler now use the same LLVM backend. Apparently, they were separate once upon a time, uh, but. They have gone and re-engineered it. Uh, this has resulted in a couple of big performance bumps. Uh, a couple mm-hmm. games that are actually able to get in game now that were before just producing a black screen, and it's a good maintainability step because now you have a consistent backend for all of these uh, emulators that um, you can use and modify. And ch- improvements to one will affect the other, and vice versa. Um, as I said before, they're, they have those wonderful little pie charts in their blog post that show that um, at the moment. You can get into um, you can get into about forty six point twenty two percent of all the games they've tested, and you can straight up get into about forty percent, or you can fully play through forty um, percent of the games available. And that's that's pretty crazy considering that like the PlayStation Three is a fairly complex piece of technology, mm-hmm. and now with a decently powerful computer, you can out you can play games that and outperform them on from the. Um, yeah. Them, the versus Cell the architecture is nothing to fuck with, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, the RSX texturing improvements really does. I mean, several examples that they've shown off in the blog post. It's like, good work on that. And just by dicking around with that, the Doom 3 BFG, they, they were surprised. They were like, this thing didn't even launch. Now it just works flawlessly. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's really neat. And it's, yeah, to your point, Jordan, you have, like, Demon's Souls, uh, which uh, on the PlayStation 3, it's 720p, 30fps, and uh, if you're playing it with RPCS 3 on Linux with Vulkan, you can basically render it at uh, UHD and have all of the fancy post-processing going on, and the game looks amazing, and it performs well above those 30fps, and... Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, yeah, the new LLVM compiler is like some games, uh, they were saying like, you know, the, the top ones that got the performance was like, oh, 20% increase in FPS, uh, games like, uh, Dynasty Warriors Gundam 3, uh, Sengoku Musou 4, uh, the improvements went anywhere from like an extra 10 frames per second to an extra 50 frames per second. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's, they're 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 making some very good progress. Um, yep, I'm I'm a bit sad that we haven't seen like much in the way of um, this sort of progress from that uh, Xbox 360 emulator. But you know, <laughs> we we get we get at least some coverage for that generation. Yeah, but I mean, I don't think enough people bought that. <laughs> no, the Xbox routinely outsold the PS3 and that. Yeah, the Xbox 360 sold. All right, almost both of you were dead. On, I'm trying to blindly hate on Microsoft, and you don't have my back on this. Fuck both of you. <laughs> no, listen, man. I got a, I got a big fat check from Sriracha Nutella that I got to cash. I don't want them it's to avoid Sriracha that Novella. Get it right, man. Jeez. <laughs> listen, it's, it's all that palm oil. It's been affecting my brain. It's all that damn whipped cream you put in your coffee and in your nose, <laughs> nose cream, and in my and in my butt too. Um, Hot. Anyways, all right. Okay. DXK. Let's let's get into the Vulcan uh, implementations of uh, older graphical APIs from Microsoft which is, the first one is the XVK and there was as usual, a Pharaonix article I love making this. some pretty wild claims Oh man, and... no, no, you, get, you, get, you gotta paint the picture, man, because uh, <laughs> the, the post is on Reddit, DXVK developer working on new AGS experiment for possible performance benefit, and your uh, 2B had to roll in like as the first post, he's like, sigh. <laughs> Since people, especially <laughs> over at Frodix, are already expecting too much. No, this does not and will not support Crossfire because that one of the points that was brought up in the Frodix article. Uh, no, uh, not every game shipping AMD AGS X64 DLL will actually use the supported extensions. Most games just use it for HDR driver versions and 
aforementioned crossfire and no this won't magically make your nvidia card run 200 percent faster it might work on non-amd uh, hardware by accident but that wasn't tested uh, and no the performance gains are not significant so All right, so, that so, is so now that, that now that mr dxvk has thoroughly quashed this rumor. Let's engage in rampant speculation Woo-hoo. and present it as fact. Because I don't know, man. I am kind of sad because for a minute there, empty was like, "Shit, I, I got a sweet mining rig. Now I got a sweet video game system." Mm-hmm. Yeah, crossfire, <laughs> baby. Does it work with like nine? Yeah, Th- that's uh, the thing with uh, Vulcan. Ideally, once uh, the uh, multiple GPU, like oh, it uses implement- Ninja to install, which is great because everyone has that one other thing that you just ninja, so you already got the build environment set up for it. Yeah, right. And yeah. the way that it would work with like multiple GPUs, if they were all the same, and Vulcan could actually leverage them all in parallel, then yes, games wouldn't need to support it. They would just need to support Vulcan, and then the API would do the rest on the available hardware. It's, yeah, but that's not the case right now, and it's nothing like a dose of reality to temper yet another Pharaonix article. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. L- l- listen, man, your, your, your dreams of having, like, op- free and open source, like, NVIDIA games work stuff does not yeah. is not is not is not based anywhere in reality. Anyways, we got yeah. another project that is similarly named what but with very different results. D9VK, this will not get confusing in the future, kids. Promise. No, no. Um <laughs> not point ten is out and the developer writes. I am pleased and happy to announce the first release of D9VK. And you can kind of get to it. So a few missing features, shader shader model one support incomplete, as well as fixed function, but I want you to go try it out and see if it works so oh big note do not use wine's uh direct 3d 9x or direct 3d compiler with d9vk they make invalid api just do it in a clean wine bottle basically so what is this this is vulcanizing dx9 right yeah um effectively um this they they outright said this is inspired by how um dxvk is doing things they're effectively just implementing the direct x9 api through Vulkan, so you can swap in the DLLs. The game doesn't know the difference, but the system will use uh, Vulkan to drive the video stuff forward. And I get, and uh, th- this is a, a lot of the benefit from this comes on like um, older older hardware because the DirectX Nine implementation in Wine is pretty sound. It's been fairly well tested and it's been fairly well validated, but it's also very heavy on the CPU because mm-hmm. it has to perform all that translation um, before it actually submits the commands to the GPU in OpenGL. So by by pulling the old API switcheroo, uh, you allow Vulkan to do its multi-threaded GPU business and can you know save you a couple CPU cycles. Um, this is this is this is ultimately a good thing, and may, may, maybe we'll see this ingested into Proton. We've the, the rumor the rumors do exist. Maybe yeah. maybe there's there's some secret back channel money handling some going on that money. we don't know about. It. Yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm actually genuinely excited about this because you know as you pointed out, uh, for the most part, DX9 games are just a given. They're going to run, but you absolutely do run into ones that run like but i'm looking at you bayonetta uh, <laughs> which i would like to see the performance kicked up i mean even if you're feeding it through like a thread ripper with a 2060 it's like eh, it's still have it's still gonna chug at 45 in some spots yeah mm-hmm. and it's it, it's something that's necessary especially like the the big one that pops into my head is skyrim because the original version of Skyrim is all DirectX 9 all the time. And the moment you start loading it up with mods, the performance, especially in Wine, just goes, and eh, no. <laughs> no that, wasn't and, that like one of the few ways you could actually hit the 4 gigabyte bug on the 970? Oh, yeah. The, the, that was one of the easiest ways. You just installed a couple of the high-res texture packs and look, I'm using 3.7 gigabytes and the game is running like butt. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So, so, so I think I think that's like the big litmus test here is if on a 970 with D9VK and all the mods, <laughs> will will you get decent performance on a 970? If D if D9VK can do that, I think they have a winning formula. They can. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> let's keep this Vulcan right. train rolling, though. All right. This is from Juan Linietsky from Godot. He's the lead engine developer. He made a not quite empty quality shoop there. 
Uh, he's <laughs> announcing that uh, he finally starting, he's finally starting working on the Vulcan support for Godot, as well as uh, some other stuff that is less important. But it begins. <laughs> this has been on the roadmap for a while. Ever since uh, Molten VK was open sourced by Valve, um, they, Godot went on and said, well, I guess now we don't have any reason to continue supporting uh, OpenGLES. Uh, or at least setting that as the main target goal, because now Vulcan will cover all of our bases there. Um, so uh, if you want to support this development, I think it's worth it to tell you guys to go to their the Godot Patreon, because they're doing a lot of good work. And it's all open source. Your mm -hmm. money will be mm -hmm. put towards a project that other people consume and will improve the gaming ecosystem, period. Right. Because oh, that, yeah. that work can be access accessed by everyone. It is kind of neat. And they, they were slow to uptake. Uh, good out. I mean, limited resources, understandably, but uh, their initial take on, they're like, we're not too sure about this Vulcan thing. We're going to stick with the open GL. Then the mobile market's like, yeah, Vulcan everything from now on out. And everybody else is like, yeah, some more of that. Yeah. So. And then Valve comes out. It's like, oh, what's that? Uh, we can get games running almost as well as Windows with Vulcan. Yeah, we'll do that. Come on. We'll <laughs> and mean, well, ultimately, uh, it's not like they, you, if you're doing a game engine in 2019 and plan on continuing to have a game engine, you don't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it, and it, it took them long enough. Now. Well, like 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 they said before, a lot of it had to do with they they wanted to maintain support for iOS. They wanted to maintain support for um, OS 10, mm -hmm. and that was the big reason from not for not uh, switching over to Vulcan. Now that's no longer an issue. So go have that. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, no, no more, no more Vulcan. Now to talk about Wildlands. <laughs> Wildlands now supporting Volkoid. <laughs> I, I, I wish. Yeah. So uh, this is this is build twenty. Um, this is um, they, they they've implemented over four hundred features, code cleanups. Uh, they have a bunch of like game balance and like game stuff in there that I do not understand for the life of me because I don't actually play this fucking game. But uh, multiplayer does now support IPv6, and they'll stop transmitting passwords as plain text. Wait, oh, what? Boo. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, they do have this little bit of a comment at the at the at the very end that's like, we no longer ship binary Linux packages because of poor compatibility between Linux distributions. All right, all right, we 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 I, I got to stop you right there, Brad. Stop saying shit like this. It's not true. It is not true at all. Steam has proved that you can ship binaries that will work on other distributions, even though they're built for something entirely different. If fucking Tuxcart, if Super Tuxcart can make that work, if they can release a binary that you can just download and run, mm -hmm. you can. You can fucking do it. It's not It's not that bad. Listen, Jordan, I don't understand how Linux works, therefore I'm going to blame it for my inability to do what you just said. So, nah. <laughs> Listen, man, I tried to plug in a DualShock controller to Linux, and then my computer caught fire. That's the trick. you got to plug in two DualShock controllers. Yeah. <laughs> and a bite-sized Snickers into the Ethernet right. port. <laughs> but like uh, Flibit said, it, it, if on Windows you're already shipping all of the necessary dependencies with your game, why aren't you doing the same for Linux? Come on. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, no, uh, Wildlands is like, Wildlands, what's that? Oh, it's open source uh, settlers with less of a focus on the city building and more of a focus on the real time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it's open Sorry. source. You can, you, can, you can build it. It's a thing. It's open source. Uh, it's multiplayer. That's good. <laughs> it's all good news, though, man. Indeed. But now, <laughs> fi finally, GOG has decided that they're going to get on the Linux train, right? Right, Pedro? Totally, right? you guys. Yeah, it, this time, this time, um, Lars Doucet got in touch with them, and uh, they said that he just got a ping from GOG. Uh, they're finally updating their pipeline tools to allow for easy uploading of Linux games that'll simplify pushing GOG builds considerably. Wait, 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 what do you mean easy? What, did you have to, like, solve a puzzle before, or what? Yeah, so what they're... <laughs> They're actually Apparently, saying capsule. is um, you have to find some traffic lights maybe a bridge <laughs> <laughs> no it's like you run this through the dbs otron 9000 and they're actually saying that they were previously deliberately making it harder to upload linux builds than it needed to be it has to be 
Because well, the, the, why that's, else? The, 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 that's what Lars, Lars says. He says, for context, there is like no backend for uploading Linux versions of your game in GOG. You straight up have to fucking email a guy for FTP credentials so you can FTP the fucking <laughs> thing up and then they can put it in your right repository, which is the most asinine thing I think I've ever heard. But that is like FTP straight up been discontinued like Linux, isn't it? That, that, that is that is having to go out of your way to like make something work less well. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the, that's almost borderline like mail us a thumb drive. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. Like I, 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 a pigeon. Yeah. I right. was going to make a joke about how Amazon actually does that, but like they also send you a device that has like fucking an extabyte of capacity so that you can fucking mm-hmm. actually mail all of your data to Amazon so they can fucking load it in S3. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you get a Pelican case of YOLO, not having to deal with like credentials and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, but, I mean, but Gal- Galaxy's coming to Linux any day now, you guys. Any day. Just, just oh, hold your breath. Okay. It'll, it'll, okay. It'll Here we go. <laughs> Let's put it, put our doubloons on the table. What are we going to get first? Um, God Galaxy or the Epic Store? Oh, I'm pretty Not sure we're going to get like a janky fucking epic store. A okay. janky one. I, I kind of feels that too. I feel like Gog is like, nah, man, this is how we roll. This is part of our identity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically uh, yeah, saying I, fuck Linux, but without saying fuck Linux. Pretty much. Oh, well, yeah. it's even worse than that. It's like, you know, we could, and we all know it wouldn't be that much work, but yeah. we're, we're a small billion dollar company so it's yeah awesome. we're a small independent team that's running our own store and publishing other video games what are you talking about Tiny. <laughs> we can't afford it <laughs> yeah all right one more before we so, get out of here one more and this one uh is well it's whispers of a machine and you may have seen it pop up on steam at one point but you may have noticed that the linux version's not there but it's an adventure game studio so what the hell well the developer basically said it's yeah we don't um we don't really have the chops we don't know how to linux bra so here's the source code here's what we tried to do have at and, uh, well, yeah, there's the GitHub repo right there. You could just clone it, try to build it yourself. They do have a couple of things already uh, lined up there. There's a couple of make files if you look at the Linux folder. Uh, but, yeah, it's I guess it's a way of giving back. And if you can get it, uh, get it to build and get it up and running, I'm sure the developer would appreciate it. Don't know oh, if yeah, there no, would the, be the, compensation. The, 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 the for that <laughs> there is not there is not in fact a make file what it what it is in fact is is a uh, a script they have called make underscore ags plus libraries.sh which has some debian specific paths hard coded in there because i installed I, I i i tracked down all the dependencies that it needed all the all like the uh, um what the, what the fuck was this thing called um uh it's in my bash history somewhere yeah uh, li- Ale- allegro <laughs> Mm. I installed all of the Allegro, it, yeah, it's all the Allegro dependencies, <laughs> and fucking, they're like, oh yeah, no, no user lib i32 was like, what the fuck kind of Debian bullshit is this? <laughs> uh, actually, it's all there, installed there in are user a couple lib. of make files in the engine directory, so mm. you can at least build that. <laughs> Ma- brilliant, 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 brilliant. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't, I don't have the time or energy to dissect and fuck around with bill scripts. I get paid to do this. I don't want to do it in my listen, off time. Listen, Jordan, I'll get it sorted. I'll send you a snap tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's as easy as a snap. Click. All right. And then John Delancey comes in and threatens to sue me, or at least hands me a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, uh, we take a look at one shot. A game where you play a cute, cuddly, kiddly, kitty cat. Made of guns. I wish they were made of guns. (laughs) Dude, I wish you could shoot some fuckers in that game. That would be great. (laughs) Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This is where the accused game must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and also Fedora. And more Fedora. (laughs) <laughs> and then the only question only then can the question be asked is it fun uh this week we're taking a look at one shot uh it's done via rpg maker it's developed by a little cat feet because you play a little cat person uh you can pick it up for about 10 bucks of your particular wet stinky currency what is it one shot is a surreal top-down puzzle adventure game with the unique gameplay capabilities you are to guide a child through a mysterious world rip on a mission to restore its long dead son also rip the world knows you exist 
Uh, mandatory disclosure. Um, the publisher Degisa, Degisa, some something or other. Degaba sent us keys and then made us go into the cave to fight Darth Vader, who turns out to be us. Anyways, it was full then, of gun cats. Uh, yeah, how how how'd it run on on the Fedorf? Hey man, over here on Fedora Thirty with the business uh, thread ripping nineteen twenty x something like that. Uh, 32 gigajoules of RAM, the 2060 video code. Hey man, no issues, out of the box, click play, it launched, that's always nice to see. A little tiny window, but it, I could embiggen it easy enough. Solid 60 UHD as it should, look at it, it's hipster pixel, but I didn't see any graphical glitches. It actually looked <clears throat> somewhat aesthetically pleasing. Control-wise, uh, out of the box with the Xbox wireless controller, which is always nice to see. You know, especially with any joints, Sometimes I'll, I'll tap that connect button and kind of poke at it. And I'm like, ah, eh, eh, this is going to be an afternoon. And it's like, nope, everything worked good. It even has a little screen that tells you how to do everything. And really the only complaint with the controls, which is not an actual issue with the controls, but for fuck's sake, let me move diagonally. <laughs> right. So, yeah, you get a solid three on makes really working business. Yeah, uh, on also Fedora 30, 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti. Yeah, it, it fucking launches, it runs. I click play and it, it ran. Performance at 1080p, well, I mean, there's no real resolution options per se. You get yeah. full screen or you got no full screen. And they actually tell you if you turn on full screen when you start the game, this game is intended to be played in a tiny little window mode, which tells me that this was not developed on a UHD monitor 100%. Graphics, they pixel, they move on the screen you can tell what things are and uh controls yeah steve input has like really spoiled us well, because when you first saw that before the android turned around the first time you're like isn't that gratuitous android butt mm -hmm. yeah there's no su there's no such thing as a gratuitous amount of android but then i refuse to believe that's a thing um but yeah uh steve overlay has uh spoiled us so i can just you know poke at my dual shock controller and shit will work i will give it four chairs padro yeah over here, it launched, but on more than one occasion, it froze with an error message about a missing file. Uh, there were no files missing. Uh, the game is just hard hard coded to look in specific directories in your home um, partition. So let's say you have a non-English locale. Yes, it's that thing again. Uh, and your documents folder is called Documentus instead. So it's, game, it's even better to give you shit that you're in Britannia. Yeah, but the game just outright freezes. And the first freeze cost me about 20 minutes worth of progress. But more on that in the fun. Uh, performance, yeah, it's RPG Maker. It, I'd be surprised if it didn't perform uh the graphics yeah they're hips or pixel in game and there's some zolgo text in the little text files that it creates uh it works as intended in that respect the controls yeah the dual shock 4 you just poke at it and it works and you can also rebind everything so as far as i'm concerned it gets three chairs on solus with the 1080 and the ryzen 5 1600 Okay, so there you go. Very few options if you are, uh, or very few, not very, there are very few <laughs> options, but there are also very few issues, unless you are a non-native English speaker in an English-speaking country. Or have a crippling fear on. of cats. <laughs> I mean, I mean, then then you have other problems right. that are far outside the scope of this chair acquisition. Anyways, then, do you have fun? Full disclosure, uh, we talked about this in the pre-pre-super shows, and go listen to that or watch it. There's a video version available. I had to Google how to get out of the first room. I did. I admit it. Uh, I'm not proud of it, but that's the thing that happened. Shortly after that, I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is going to be this type of game. And by that, I mean, it's kind of a dangerously slow burn because I was a solid 59 minutes in it before I was like, oh, okay, I get, uh, I kind of like this. I'm down with this. I can rock with it. Because what we have here is something that is, shall we say, charming. Uh, you're a little cat human, short and stout. Uh, you get a light bulb, you get a dark world, and you got robots. What's not to love? Doesn't sound like much, but it's put together well enough. I mean, as you play it as a little cat human, you're the savior, and occasionally, sometimes, you're God. That, you just gotta roll with it, man. All the while, I am God. you have shut up, God. <laughs> Quit talking to me. We're not going back to prison. 
Uh, all the while, you got like the mysterious NPC, like hacks are in your PC, leaving files and clues and shit. And that's what I meant by it's that type of game. Since that's been done before, like OMG Pony Island, you know, and it's like, oh, you got to go figure out and hack the game as it's hacking you. There's a little bit of that in there. It's also the other type of game where you have to combine items. And that's always a carp shoot since you're bound to run into at least one instance of what the hell was the developer thinking? And that moment for me was right out of the box where you had, I got a spoil. It's not even a spoiler. You have to combine the TV remote with drum roll the fucking window the hell uh <laughs> didn't i didn't even feel bad i was like i would have never i was like grid clicking at that point was, um, anyway short story long the game broke for me in an unrecoverable way because it tried to drop a file onto my desktop my xfce4 desktop and proceeded to give me shit about not being able to find it. It's like, I put it where you can find it. It's right there. Why can't you find Well, let me tell you why I couldn't find it, Brad. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I, I couldn't do it because you got to be root to put anything on my desktop. Because reasons. That That's just how it's an issue that I had to fix and I had to sort. And, you know, it kind of irritated me a little bit because I could have kept on going. Could have kept rocking on because it wasn't like a crit. I don't know. It could have been a critical thing. And I didn't want to be like two more hours. I'm enjoying the game. Didn't want to be like two hours into this and hit like a gotcha. Like, fuck. Okay. Now I don't have that bit of information to continue on. So I'm going to say this. I mean, if you're going to cock around uh, with dropping files anywhere on somebody's computer, which I'm not against. I understand the game mechanic and it can be entertaining. You need like a list of like what you're going to try to accomplish somewhere, especially on Linux, especially on Linux. Uh, but regardless, at the end of the day, I mean, reasonably cheap game price to sell. And again, I find it charming. So two chairs. Yeah, so like like Ven mentioned, this game operates on LucasArts game logic, where you basically have to try and combine all the things with all the other things and hope it'll work out once you eliminate all the other possibilities. It's kind of like Sherlock Holmes, but not like a good Sherlock Holmes. It's like season four of Sherlock, where Moffat lost his goddamn mind and thought people will still follow him around. I don't know. Alas, the game actually does have a story and a bit of sense of humor, and I can appreciate that. And I actually kind of like being called that at. Um, the distinction of like, no, you are, you are not the character. You are the person controlling the character. That was a thing that like a lot of games used to do as their default position before they're like, oh no, you are Adam Jensen and you got to go become a cyberpunk and save <laughs> Poland or some stuff. I don't know. <laughs> um, I also like being able to specify my prop, my, uh, proper epithet as God Emperor Jord because I ran out of space. Um, so that's what they were calling me all the time. Unfortunately, uh, the game really presents itself as a glorified series of fetch quests, and that can get a little tiresome after a while. Um, there, there's definitely a story that I'm kind of interested in, but, um, again, there's a lot of just wandering around clicking on stuff, and the gameplay is not hyper-engaging. Um, it's just more like, as, keep on asking yourself, what did I miss? There's actually a point where, like, I accidentally hit enter twice on, like, a critical piece of dialogue and I had no idea what the fuck I needed to do I actually needed to consult a walkthrough because it wouldn't tell you what the other goal was and the game it, the game is basically structured as well now you just got to basically combine everything with everything blindly without any sort of hint or hope of direction until you get the thing and the the, the not prawn thing is pretty neat um I, li I like uh, I, I like the whole, like, oh, well, the part of the game happens outside the game, and you gotta, like, use your brain. Uh, but yeah, if you're not using, like, a standardized OS interaction layer, like, say, XDG or whatever, you're gonna run into some fucking problems when people can't find shit, because you're making some assumptions based on where people store their Can, I, can I ask directory. you a question, Jordan? What was that? Uh, on, a, on a scale of, like, 1 to 10, legit, how helpful would a fucking minimap be? You know what? I thought about that. I thought about that, but like at least the the map area maps are small enough that I didn't like lose track of where I was, and they're like distinct enough. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe just like a little rem like a little reminder thing because that 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 was my concern. It's like oh oh I don't have a mini map. I'm gonna have to remember where everything is. But for the most part, I was able to keep everything straight. I don't know. Um, 
I'll give it two chairs. I I can appreciate what it's trying to do, but it's just kind of boring. Maybe maybe you'll like it though. Hypothetical straw man viewer that I'm talking to right now. Whatever. Hi, it's time to crack open a fresh can of haterade. Yeah, uh, I'm usually the one who gives games the most chairs, but uh, not this one. See, the game portion itself is the standard adventure thing. Like it's been already mentioned, you rub all the items on each other and all on all of the interactable bits of the map, uh, and you hope that something happens. Uh, don't really bother thinking about it too much because. Like Jordan already mentioned, you're going to hit the um, LucasArts things that you're just going to have to trial and error your way past any particular puzzle. And most of them aren't really that clever either. Uh, what it doesn't straight up tell you, you can probably figure out by just, you know, trial or trial and error your way um, across things. The fuckery with the system files was not appreciated, especially because I had to go out of my way to correct the locale mishaps because they weren't using XDG. There's also the fact that uh, I play games to get away from the real world. I don't need a game constantly reminding me and breaking the fourth wall that I'm just an idiot in front of the PC. I can do that perfectly well. You know, in all all fairness, also, also that's my job too. Dude, dude, hey, Jeremy, I'm, I'm just saying, in all fairness, most of the time, playing as a kitty cat, light bulb carrying person in a world full of robots doesn't really strike the real world nerve for them. Because we're living in a world of kitty cat robots <laughs> breaking me Yeah, down. so I wouldn't be opposed to a game that actually incentivizes the immersion aspect, but no, instead you have a game that constantly reminds you that you're just some asshole playing a video game. And the, the video game in question, it's really not that fun, at least for me, so I'll give it one chair. Well, there you go. If you're so, Portuguese, you will hate this game. I possibly, man. Maybe, maybe it, you just don't have enough Toxoplasma Gandia in your life. Yeah, clearly. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I mean, I mean, clearly you do. You're you're mispronouncing it. Um, the <laughs> man, like you should talk about mispronouncing shit. I would say at the end of the day, one of the things that would help this game out, which it, I, maybe it has it later on, is like maybe some basic combat. Or something to fill in the uh, gaping swaths of walking around looking for shit. I mean, it, market, it markets itself as puzzle adventure, so I don't think... I, I, I definitely think if you added a little bit of combat, people would lose their goddamn mind. I, I, I don't know. I could I can adventure while stabbing. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, 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 hope you're, I, I hope your mother's proud of you. Mm -hmm. she, 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 ra she raised you good to be able to adventure and stab simultaneously. No, <laughs> man. All right. Um, I don't know. We got any other final thoughts before we kick on over to Hit Mill? No. All right. Coming up next, we talk about Linux gaming on a Linux gaming podcast. Madness. Shock. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's wrap this up. It's boys been going on for far too long. Boys and it's girls. Yes, poison girls. Poison. No, it's poise. <laughs> po then I, I, thought, I thought it was poisson girls. Croissant. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's poise, as in stance. <laughs> so uh, if you'd like to let us know just exactly how much we've butchered the English language tonight and every whoa, night before whoa, this whoa. one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, man. Don't, don't be throwing everybody <laughs> under the bus. <laughs> Hey man, I'm not the only one who's guilty of that. Uh, you can do so very easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, fill out the form, make sure LGC Weekly is the show that you're sending your hate mail to, and we'll be happy to feature it right here, right now. Uh, it's really easy. There's not even a capture there anymore, so anything you send us, we will be happy to take a look, like Seems William legit. did. William. Yeah, God damn it. Will, uh, will, will, and, uh, will I am? Will I am? Yes. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's talking. Well, he's going to talk about Ubuntu gaming. Any that William asks. Is there anything actually wrong with Ubuntu for gaming? It gets so much hate for being Linux with training wheels, but always a system requirement on Steam. Does something like Manjaro offer any real benefit from gaming? Someone, someone uh, short answer: this? No. Yes. <laughs> Re you the, get to the, say the, you've installed Arch. The, <laughs> Easy the, mode Arch. Oh, you mean on the, Windows? 
<laughs> mistake mistake number one, of course, in this entire endeavor is actually attempting to play video games under Linux. It's impossible. You shouldn't do it, period. You yeah. can totally get Stick Arch. With you can get Arch from the Windows 10 store now. You can. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Ar- Arch, Fedora, Ubuntu, and Suze. So um, the, the amount of people that are like, I run Arch, have it just multiplied times and Infinity. Oh my God! Could you imagine in every single support form now, every window going? Well, as an every Windows user going is like as an Arch user, well, I, can I run Arch, some... um, so I, I know what I'm talking about. Uh... Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so I mean, really, really, there's nothing wrong with using Ubuntu for gaming. In fact, there's there's a reason why it's listed as the system requirement is because that's kind of what Steam, uh, the Steam runtime is based in and around. Ooh, would you say it's kind of like Steam yeah. OS but usable as a desktop? <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily say usable as a desktop then, right. but um, <laughs> certainly like Steam OS is is an adequate comparison. Um, no, I, I mean we 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 give a bunch of shit because you know as experienced grognards we want to do stuff and a bunch of disagrees with us and as a Linux based operating system we'll fight you on that unlike say other mm-hmm. distros that kind of expect you to fuck around with the base system or are at least designed to allow you to fuck around with the base system and not break horribly. Mm-hmm. Worth. Um something as 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 for something like Manjaro, does it offer any real benefit from gaming? It, yeah, it lets lets you claim you're running Arch. That's basically it. <laughs> yeah. What about performance? I mean, the one thing I'll say, like training wheels, we ran into this. Actually, I ran into this, and Jordan will be running into this on his next uh DNF update, is like OBS. The there was an update to Libx two six four from Fedora, and they pushed that out, and it broke OBS and VN code, like just straight up broke it, no warnings, and it's like it's broke. Figure the shit out. Hope you know, and which required me to roll back some packages and reinstall CUDA. Um, that probably wouldn't happen under Ubuntu, and if it did, you would be fucked. Yeah. So <laughs> positive, well, negative yeah. with that. I mean, with Fedora, it's like, all right, let me just rip this out, and it's not going to bitch at me, and I'm going to slap in what I need, and we're good. Mm-hmm. No, uh, Fedora the, the, will the, absolutely let you do whatever you want to do, and if you happen to break your system, that's your fault. But uh, with like something like Manjaro specifically, mm-hmm. it will be good out of the box if you need, like, uh, up-to-date Mesa drivers like MT mentioned. So that's uh, a good thing. What about, yeah, if you're rocking recommendations, say I just got a RX 580, not want to use Then Manjaro is a good choice. Um, Solus is a good choice. Uh, Fedora what's even, the they ship Popo S- of Mesa. Popos? Mm. Popos. <laughs> Pop- yeah, Pop- Popos. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the distro Ubuntu order. based, it's, it's, but it's it does you, come with the dirt, drivers. <laughs> the worms in the dirt. Ubuntu. And hey man, look at it this way. I mean, if you still want support for your 3DFX Glide, you could just install Debian. I mean, I'm sure that's probably current. Ish. Debian yeah. joke. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Old, old just like us. Uh, on that bombshell. We're going to cue the music and get off. Out of here. Thanks everybody for joining us live. As always, 9:30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where this nightmare train pulls off the tracks into your eyes and into your ears, and hopefully not into your dreams. That sounds terrifying. Anyway, at Vin Stone, I'm on Twitter. I'm there. I'm a real person. Tweet at me. I might tweet you back. I might click on the little heart thing that used to be a star. It's creepy. Clicking on hearts. And uh, at Vin Stone, I might just be at Vin on Mast. Linux Teamcast. Dot com if you like that federated nonsense. I'm Jordan Swung. I am the boy of your dreams. And you can find me in your nightmares as well as at the Burning Fool on Twitter. That hurts so Brojo. much you caused an X run. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yes. heard that. Yes. Uh, or Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com. And I am Peter Matos. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or, you know, casually strolling down the street to Tesco's or to work. That's about it. <laughs> Make sure you, to how, kick him if you see him. How do you find the time between hating gun cats? <laughs> <laughs> I hate those guys. Ah. Oh, dreams and nightmares. There you go. Dreams and nightmares, but we're yeah. made of the same thing kittens <laughs> are. Shit. <laughs> Guns. <laughs> 
<laughs> what did they go through in Foxy, Empty, Atomic Gas, Mike G, Barbara and Tremor 7, Alias, Haplo, and Maggie, who are executive producers and we can't read fast enough to cover all the glorious people. Also helping make this possible. Ad-free and all that fun stuff. When I say all that fun stuff, I don't mean lightly. I mean, this is why we're able to do the fucking show now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. Oh, dung. Man, that shirt looks like and a the Guns the fuck with, shirt. yeah, Mike G just uh, clearly a, in the lead. Oh, Mike's, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's just like, yeah. fuck off. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 just, I'm just waiting for, like, when we get an envelope and Mike G has, like, sent us the deed to a house that he's bought for us. <laughs> it's like, you, you said you wanted a studio. Here you go. Property. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, straight up just the deed to some fucking place. Um, yeah. It's actually a Genghis Tron shirt, by the way. They do, Genghis like, Tron. cyber grind core. It's pretty good. I like it. Then if I have beautiful people, we'll see you next week. Bye. Shoot it. Laser things. I don't know. Shoot. Shoot. Five dudes. <laughs>